Tá bom, podemos fazer isso. Não faz pergunta difícil, tá? Ih, Porque às vezes tu faz cada pergunta, eu fico... <risos> Tá bom, então, bem-vindo para esse episódio de Ozzy English, o um podcast maravilhoso para toda pessoa que quer aprender o inglês australiano. <risos> Vamos fazer em inglês? Vamos fazer em inglês. All right, sorry guys, we got a little carried away, I'm trying to cheer my wife up here, she's a bit, um, <risos> underwhelmed with the prospect of doing a podcast with me, though it's been too long, it's Kelly. It's been too long, and... It's been way too long. It's been too long, too. I'm just tired. So She's a tired girl. Why would you be tired, Kel? What have you been up to that, that would make you so... Because I have a toddler <laughs> and I'm seven months pregnant. Oh, man, there's a lot to cover. Well, before we get into that, before we get into the meat of today's content... Into the meat. Into the meat. I thought... Can you say that in Portuguese? Vamos nessa carne. No, we, 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 would not, we wouldn't say that. <laughs> Um, so, before we get into that, I thought that I would say that I got Kel on here today in order to get her to recap 2020 that we've had. Like, obviously, we're not going to get too deep into COVID and everything else. I mean, mm. we can mention it peripherally, on mm. the periphery. Um, but it was mainly to kind of just let people get a bit of a look, a look-see into our lives and what we've been up to this year and um, the- Wins, the fails, and everything in between. So, <laughs> Kelly, how has or was your 2020, I guess, has been? It can't be now. It's it's the 2nd it's of January <laughs> of 2021. Um, I think we were very fortunate to be safe and healthy. So, that's something I'm really grateful for because we no one got... And I'm saying, I'm talking about COVID here. Mm -hmm. Like, no one we know got COVID, right? And well, one of my friend's fathers died from it. Yes. Yeah. But I mean, I mean, close relatives and, um, yes, at friend. least in the yeah. near proximity, none of our, the closest family and friends yes. that we have got it. And I mean, no. at least here in Australia, people yes. like, um, Christian from Kangaroo English got it. I'm pretty sure Adriana from English with Adriana's husband got yeah, it. I'm not true. sure if she got it, but they're living in Europe. And obviously, yeah. it's a lot worse there. And my family in Brazil, though, against all the odds, no one got sick <laughs> um, <Jeez>. yet. <laughs> to knock on wood. Uh, knock on wood. <laughs> um, so, uh, that's something that really um, makes me realize how fortunate we are because mm -hmm. no one got sick and thankfully, no one died and we're all fine and well. Mm -hmm. um, Chuck the headphones on so that you can uh, hear yourself. Just notice that Kel doesn't have the headphones on. Oh, it okay. sounds it sounds so much better. You can hear my voice right in your ears, as okay. if you're listening to this podcast. Okay. How does that sound? Yeah, good. Can you hear yourself? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, sorry, continue. No friends got it. You feel really fortunate. <laughs> I feel really, really lucky. Um, but yeah, it was a it was a crazy year, I think. Um, well, let's sort of start from the start. I guess the bushfires kind of happened here in Australia in um, obviously earlier than January yeah. 2020, but starting in 2020, January, that was where we were at. There was sort of bushfires happening. Noah would have been seven months old at that point in January. So, that would yes, have been- Yes, yes. We around were dealing with old. a little baby crawling around all over the place. He wasn't yeah. walking. He it's wasn't talking. Crazy, hey? Yeah, exactly. And that's why as well, I thought it'd be cool to have you on to talk about his progression, yeah. your progression with now being seven months pregnant- um, man, there's loads to talk about. I just Our think languages. It's hard to because right now it feels that he's been always walking. <laughs> like I, I honestly, you forget. You forget. Uh, it's like I, in January he was seven months old, around seven months old, mm -hmm. and it just feels that he's been a toddler for ages. And he walks and talks, and you know, it's not like we remember much of him as a little baby, unable to do most things. Right now, it's like we used to him being cheeky and running and pretty independent in terms of feeding himself, yeah. running around, talking, interacting, and just his um um learning capacities and like how much he like gets from every single um um interaction he has with other people. Like we might say a word today, mention something, not even talking to him, and then a few days later he repeat that and say mm -hmm. the. Like mm -hmm. now he's saying blue, because I remember a few days ago your mom was trying to te um to teach him the colors, mm -hmm. and I'm like that's crazy. It's crazy to 
to look back and be like, he was tiny and it all happened within, what, a year? Well, we had our friends stay for New Year's. These are other Brazilians with two children. One mm. of my um, students, Alida, and her husband, Renato. Mm -hmm. So, hello, Alida and Renato, if you guys are listening to this. Thank you for coming down and spending yes. New Year's with us and hanging great. out with your kids. But I think Renato was saying to me at one point, or you, I think you were there, that mm. he was saying the days are long but the years are short yes. with, with small children at True. least. And so, it, it was a good uh, analogy for what we're experiencing where it mm -hmm. seems like Every single day is like a real drain, more mm -hmm. so for you than me, because you're doing the lion's share of taking care of Noah during the day. Yeah. And um, but the year seems to be going fast. I mean, he's we we had him the other day. It feels like it feels like we were True. at the hospital the other day, and that was a year and a half ago. I know. And you see photos of us, and you and I haven't really changed in the year and a half. No. But he's gone through huge changes, <laughs> right? Like yeah. he's gone through he's massive completely changes. Different, and he's just he's just changing every day. I realize it is one of those moments where you just you have this like, wow, it's been so long. Like I um, caught up with my student midwife because mm -hmm. she's again uh, following us. Like this is Shani. Shani, yeah. So do you want to explain what happened with Shani um, and how she kind of fit in with your first pregnancy? So she is studying to become a nurse, a midwife. Um, so as part of her studies, she has to follow a certain number of pregnant women. When I say follow, like she doesn't come here. But like when I have appointments, yeah, she tries. To, <laughs> she follows you down the street. She follows me everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, she keeps track of what you're doing and yes. what you're up to with so your pregnancy. She goes to the appointment with us and um, um, ultrasounds, and she takes notes. And fortunately, she was there for the birth when Noah was born, mm -hmm. which was really it was really nice for her. I imagine to be able to you know participate and when she kind of needs witness. experience points right so yeah. you know at the moment you're on your l plates trying to learn to drive yeah. she was on the sort of analogous l plates for being a nurse exactly. where she needs to do a, follow a certain number of births yeah. or pregnancies through two births but the funny i don't i might be saying rubbish but i don't think she actually planned to be there for his birth like mm. she it was something she went to see me as you know we got we got along and she was she became a friend and she went to see us and then a few hours later I was, you know, ready to push and she was like, I, I guess I'm staying. Mm -hmm. And she's they allowed her to stay. There. I don't know how the the things work in a hospital, but um I imagine she didn't actually plan to be there for the moment for when he was actually being born. Um but then now she's she's with us again because um mm -hmm. we we kept in touch. Like she we we would always like um exchange messages and things and um and then I told her I'm pregnant again. And she was like, you know what? I need some I need another <laughs> pregnant woman. <laughs> and I was like, man, if I got it, some spots available. <laughs> if it's gonna benefit you, I would be you know, very happy to have you with us again. Yeah. Um so yeah, we just um had well, an appointment the other day and, and then the, I, I was just saying it was one of the, those moments where you're just like, Wow, it's been almost two years since mm -hmm. I last you know, saw you and I was with you and doing all those things. Maybe time not the flies, last. Time yeah, flies. but it's just so crazy. Um, yeah, but with Noah, <laughs> it's just different challenges every day. Like um, before it would be oh my god, like a breastfeeding or you know um, uh, introducing solids um and things like that. And now he's like, we actually have to think how we're gonna educate him. And entertain him. And entertain him. Oh, we can't swear around him. Or like a car, we have to be strict with um, uh, screens. Or, you know, we can't, we actually doing what parents do. I kind of feel mm -hmm. like more serious, more of an adult now because we're kind of like discussing all those big issues that every single parent, um, you know, what those to do with social media yeah. and iPhones social and all that sort of stuff. And things like we have to think about all those things. And like, yeah. um, it's just really mind blowing how quick, how, yeah, how quick it goes. What was it like, uh, I guess, the last year with him from about seven months to now 18 months compared to what you were imagining it would be like before mm. the fact? Was it what you are expecting? It's hard to... I, I don't think I was expecting much <laughs> in terms of... I was not definitely not expecting to be easy. Mm. It was probably easier than I thought. But now that I've, I'm over 
the challenges, the most of the challenges we had, it's easy for me to say, oh, yeah, you know, it was a piece of cake. <laughs> but now <laughs> we had- It's a- funny how we were saying this the other day yeah. that hindsight is very kind to you. Yeah. You, you kind of forget how hard things were. And then if we talk about specific things, like, I mean, you had mastitis a few times, I think, mm-hmm. didn't you? And, and how horrible that was. And you can kind of be like- Oh, yeah, the breastfeeding wasn't actually Mm -hmm. that easy. (laughs) It seems like now that it's over, it was a piece of cake. But you're like, well, during that period, it was not fun. Not at all. But it's funny. I love- We were talking about this. I love how much the human mind kind of forgets a lot of the horrible stuff that you go through. Mm -hmm. And you kind of- At least you can remember the horrible stuff. But I think with the memories of Noah, at least, and maybe it's a child-related thing where we've evolved to try and- see our children in the best light possible. Yeah. But we tend to only look back and see all of the happy and fun things that mm-hmm. happen with him. You don't really look back and think, oh, my God, it was so horrible. Well, you remember the feeling. Like, yeah. I remember being awake at night with him and first time he got sick and everything. So, But I don't remember the specifics, like the details yeah. of, like, there was one day that I really struggled. Well, you remember you were tired. You just don't yes. remember how tired. How tired, right? exactly. <laughs> um but yeah, um, I think we had a very, very difficult phase with him for probably for like three months. He was just not himself. Like he was changing a lot. And I think the, the child, child brain needs some time to adjust. I don't know, but it was one of those developmental leaps that children go through. Um, and it was really hard. He was just discovering his, um, ability to say no Mm -hmm. and like he was discovering that if he cries and he you know throws a tantrum we'll be upset or like distressed i get really distressed so it was really hard and he wouldn't sleep to the point we i had to get a um sleep consultant Mm -hmm. to help me out and um yeah but that's the the main thing i remember from when he was little at the beginning of the year for to now um, but there was, there is so much, um, the positives are so great as well. Like I'd seen him, he could, he couldn't walk, you know, <laughs> and now he <laughs> runs. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's I think that crazy. I had that mind blowing moment when I took him out to the oval nearby and we were chasing a soccer ball mm-hmm. around and I had never seen him kick the ball. We'd always been trying to encourage him to he say, you know, shoot yeah. shoot the, shoot the. Um, but he always just picked it up, if anything, yeah. and would just drop it. You know, he, he couldn't even really throw at that point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then when we took him to the Oval that day, he suddenly something clicked and he was effectively just running at the ball mm-hmm. and then worked out that he could keep directing the ball by running at it and kicking it. I know. And I remember just thinking, how the hell did he just go from zero to 100, mm-hmm. you know, and just work that out? And then ever since, he's been yeah. kicking the ball around. And it's been interesting seeing him now favoring his right hand for everything and his yeah. left, uh, sorry, and his right foot for everything as mm. well. I haven't seen him kick with his left foot yet, no, but he, he kicks doesn't. with his right. Yeah. And everything that he throws, he either uses both hands or his right hand. Yeah. And so and it was interesting seeing him yeah. go from, I think at the start of the year, he would have been sort of using both hands and mm-hmm. feet equally for things. And now he's, I, I would almost bet everything that I have that he's right handed and right footed. <laughs> <laughs> it. it I think with language is really clear how much they develop mm-hmm. in, in such a short time. Well, let's switch on to that then. How has it yeah. been raising a bilingual child? Very frustrating <laughs> <laughs> because he doesn't, well, he does understand, he understands everything. I think he always understands him. more than you think, right? That's the yes. crazy thing because you'll say something like, today I said, um, uh, can you mm-hmm. take the little comforter f- off my head? Mm-hmm. And he instantly just took it off my yeah. head. And yeah. I was like, that blows my mind that he they can understand. understand the grammar and the complexity in that in that um, request. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, although afterwards I said, could you put the, put the yeah. nani on your own head and you put it on my head again? Though I, I don't know if that was understanding <laughs> or just like, screw you, dad. <laughs> what blows my mind is he understands everything I say and if i give him directions like i I ask him to do something he understands and he can decide not to do it Mm -hmm. or he might just do it 
But I think what really, really amazes me is um, how much he can reproduce from that. Like, um, I, I don't know, like just saying the colors and animals and like, and just creating his own little thing. Like, he wouldn't say birds, he says caca. Mm -hmm. it's, it's very complex if you think about it because he knows that ducks make uh, quack quack, something like that. But he thinks all the birds are ducks or all yeah, the ducks yeah, yeah. are, I don't know. It's all and pattern recognition, yes, right? Yes, that's and what is are, amazing. Are they onomatopoeias? Are they the words where they I sound like how they're they said? I think, I think that is yeah. what it is. An onomatopoeia where it's like, um, I, I don't know, you have those sorts of the sounds like to meow. is yeah, The verb is yeah, the yeah, sound yeah. that a cat makes that we say in English, meow. Yeah. But you, we say to meow. Um, and so, it's interesting that he's kind of getting that from the sound that he heard a duck make when he yeah. heard that quack, 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 quack. Yeah. And he tried to reproduce it and say, ka, 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 ka. And, and then just called them ka, yes, ka, kas. Yes, <laughs> It became his thing. And now he's getting um, humor. Yes. That's really crazy. That blew my mind. I think he- <laughs> What was he doing the other day? He does this thing and he's done it for actually quite a few months, right? Where he pretends to put something in his mouth. Yeah, it's so just he, being cheeky. He knows, like, if we're outside and he picks up a rock we'll, and he'll put it near his mouth, you know, we'll say, now not bark, not in the mouth, don't put it in your mouth. Mm -hmm. And he'll pull it away from his mouth and then laugh at you. Yeah. And then after that, he kind of worked out that he can pick up things that he knows he shouldn't be eating. Mm -hmm. And he'll wait for you to look at him and then he pretends to put them in his mouth. Yeah. And just as you're about to say something, pulls them away and starts laughing. And he even says, mmm. <laughs> That's the most, it's ridiculous. And now, <laughs> like the taxi thing. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> we'll tell that story. But uh, I found it funny that he got that humor before we get onto the taxi yeah. thing. You think about how complicated humor is as a psychological thing that's going on, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I would imagine maybe some animals, like some parrots might get it. Mm. The great apes, maybe chimpanzees and gorillas. Dolphins. Maybe dolph Maybe dolphins do. They get play, right? They get There's yeah. a lot of animals can play, but humor is another level where you are playing in a way that you know that the other person or the other thing involved is going to enjoy and uh, and find it you know funny yeah and it's hard yeah. to imagine animals doing that but you're like how the hell does a one and a half year old child mm -hmm. innately have the ability to make a joke yeah because it's not like we sit down and teach him every single day so yeah. do this and then you do that and because the other person's expecting this they'll laugh yeah and so try and make them laugh he just did it it's not something you can explain or teach it's yeah like he just gets it. Yeah. And I think all children to some extent do, right? Where they just do weird things mm -hmm. and they laugh and you're like, it's so bizarre to think that a young child who can't even speak yet gets humor effectively. Yeah, it's crazy. But the taxi thing was we were at my um, <laughs> sister's house for a Christmas party with the rest of my mother's family. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if it was him or if it was Isabel, my niece who fell over. No, I think it was him. But um, yeah, and I yeah. yelled out taxi, and it's a kind of a complicated joke. But in Australia, probably the rest of the English speaking world too, if if someone falls over or does something like they trip over, like usually not very seriously, mm -hmm. obviously, but they make a sort of stumble or something, you can say taxi, and the reference is that they've drunk too much and they're a little bit drunk, yeah, and that they need to get a taxi home and call out the word taxi. Yeah. So, taxi, you know, to go home it's instead of driving themselves. Yeah, it's yeah. time to go home. So, he tripped over and I said, taxi, taxi. And then, I don't know if Sarah tripped over or something. No, I My think- My auntie? I think he repeated the- he said taxi and everyone was like, wow, he, he, ne he had never said it mm -hmm. at, until this day. And now, every time he trips over- Yeah, or he that's falls, right. He says it again. <laughs> I don't even know if he gets it, but he was saying yeah. it when he fell over. Like, he would fall over and then say, oh, taxi. And you're kind of like, oh, God, that's so funny. <laughs> it is the best. <laughs> he doesn't even know why, but it's yeah. so good. Yeah. I love it. And oh, then man. we had the, well, there was definitely no intentional. It was more this association, I believe, thing where he sees a pattern and he thinks that's how things work. Mm -hmm. Like during Christmas. I would take him outside and there would be lots of um, Santa, Santa Claus. 
Santa Claus, Santa like Claus, lights yes. and decorations. Yeah, and stuff but the the figure, yards. the 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 old man with the white beard. Yeah, Santa and, Claus is. Yeah. Yeah. So we would see <laughs> all of them, and I would say, "Oh, Feliz uh, Natal, ho ho ho!" Yeah, Happy Merry Christmas, yeah. ho ho ho! The sound that Santa makes, ho ho yeah. ho! Merry and, Christmas. <laughs> and then one day we were in the car. <laughs> Um, we were at the supermarket or something. This we is had, so good. And then there's this old man coming towards our car because his car was parked just on the side. Next to it, yeah. Next to us. And Noah just looks at him and like, ho, ho, ho. In the background. In the background. But not like that. He said it like, ho, ho, ho. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, what? I just couldn't stop laughing. <laughs> And it's then just- I, it happened again when I was walking with him, and there's this old lady, it wasn't even a man, with white hair, and she didn't have a beard, but she had a very, you know, prominent white hair. Yeah. Um, and then he looked at her, and he said, ho, ho, ho. And she thought it was the most, the funniest thing ever. Yeah. She stopped, and she said, oh, this is, no, this is cute. And I was actually very embarrassed, but she- I don't think she got that he was referencing Santa. Oh, she probably, it was very- Obvious, <laughs> but I th- I'm glad she had a sense of humor, and it was actually cute. You know, come on. Yeah. Um, so yeah, he's just he's just pulling those things out uh, slowly, and mm-hmm. um, it's really interesting to watch that. Well, bringing it back to the bilingualism, do you want to tell the listeners a little bit ha- about how we've been attacking the uh, task of teaching him two languages? Because there's a, it's yeah. one of those things in English we have that expression, you, there's um, a million ways to skin a cat. Mm-hmm. I, don't, I mean, I don't know if it's that exactly, but the idea is that you can skin an animal in many, many different ways. Mm. You've got many options. And I think it's the same thing with raising bilingual children. Mm. You've effectively got those, I think, three main ways of doing it. You only speak the foreign language at home. And mm-hmm. he gets exposure to the native language outside the house or the, mm-hmm. the native the language of the ha- the country, which is what we're effectively doing. Yeah. You have the one where you have one parent, the native language of each parent is what that parent speaks yeah. to the child. So, it would be as if you were speaking just Portuguese and I was speaking English to him. Mm-hmm. And then there's um, the periodic sort of stuff where- you can either do it uh, geographically. When we're at home, we speak this language. When we're outside, we speak that language, no matter mm-hmm. who's there or whatever. Or each day we change which language we're speaking. Okay. So, there's many different ways of doing it. But we decided to stick with just speaking Portuguese at home. It's yeah. a Portuguese house. And then outside of the house, at least with other people, when there are English speakers there who mm-hmm. don't speak Portuguese, we just speak in yeah. In English, although I tend to just speak Portuguese to both you and him anyway. Yeah, me too. Uh, habit. Yeah, I do the same. Yeah, it's been hard because um, I don't think at this stage we can devise a plan or like, oh, let's do it like very, um, in a very organized way. I don't know. I just find that he's a bit young yet. And we just we just did the one language at home thing which is much easier for both of us. Well, and it was a bit selfish too because I mm. was pretty keen to continue learning Portuguese. And so, if I was speaking English the entire time at home with him yeah. and only ever speaking Portuguese with you when I when I yeah. had time, he would probably end up learning more English and less Portuguese and I would end up mm-hmm. learning less Portuguese. So, mm-hmm. I felt like it wasn't really a, um, a bonus. It would have been what we chose to do Mm-hmm. I reckon if we were living in Brazil. Yes. Or we would have just had English yeah. at home. I, I, honestly, I think it would be a bit confusing for me to do that. Here. To do what? To speak, you speak yeah. English, I speak Portuguese. Because I keep, like, switching. Back between, and forth. Yeah. But he, uh, anyway, um, I was just going to say that he, he I, I said before, he understands everything. doesn't matter if we speak to him in English or if we speak to him in Portuguese. But he says much more in English. Yeah. Than in Portuguese. Well, and we've well, discovered that's partly because a lot of the yeah. words he wants to say are easier in English when yes. they're on their own. Like, like today he he was saying mice like more mm-hmm. a lot. Not like the animal in English in Portuguese. Yeah, mice is like mice. more. <laughs> he's that's something that's only like the last few days. He's actually you know he's sticking to it. Like I know he's when he wants something. When he's had something he wants more, he'll say my. So now mm-hmm. he's, it's 
consolidated, I think.、Mm-hmm. But other than that, he he mostly he just speaks English、mm-hmm. because they're shorter words and they're much easier to pronounce. I think I don't know. Well,、um, the crucial example, probably one of the first words he started saying was up. Up. So、yeah. he wanted you to pick him up. He wanted to get up in his chair. He wanted to get on the bed. And up is a lot easier to say than parasima. Yes. Which is in terms of just syllables, right?、Yeah. You got one syllable versus four. Yes.、Yeah. And it was the same with down, right? Down. Parabaishu. He even says up when he's going down, anyways. Yeah. He just means. Yeah. It's so funny. <laughs> and the other thing we noticed we should mention is his action word, Edgar. 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 Yeah. So we didn't know who Edgar was for a really long time, but we got、mm-hmm. it. So he、yeah. would just for a long time just point and say Edgar or Unga. Unga. Now it, it's more like Unga. Unga, yeah. yeah, it kind of morphed, didn't it? Yeah. But the funny thing was that it was this kind of like utilitarian use of language where he just had this word that、mm-hmm. he would say when he wanted something to be done. Yeah. So and he would point. So he wanted to get up on something. He would say unga unga ega ega and point at like at the top of the couch.、Mm-hmm. If he wanted some water, he would point to his water and say unga unga、mm-hmm. unga unga, and you would just give it to him. And I remember we were chatting with my folks about like why is he still doing this? You know, like、mm-hmm. he, he understands when I say, "Do you want water? Do you want food?" And、um, my parents were like, "Well, it works. It's not like it's not working for him. All he、mm-hmm. has to do is go unga unga, and you." Fix whatever、mm. the problem is that he wants solved. If he wants his toy, he just points、yeah. at it and says "unga," and you give it to him. So it became、mm. this like action word. Yeah, make this happen.、It、Do was, this. It was very cute at the beginning, but then <laughs> it became really annoying because he he would just keep repeating it. <laughs> Ed- Edgar, 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 Edgar. It was just really hard to. Even like even understand what actual what he actually wanted because well, quite often you thought it was、anything. agua, agua, agua. Yeah, agua. initially it was agua. Now agua、mm-hmm. became、um, apple. Yeah. So I don't know, but now I feel like because <laughs> his vocabulary is expanding and he's learning words, Edgar is a bit like he doesn't use it as much. No. It's just like I actually don't hear him saying Edgar、yeah. at all. Recently, sometimes he does, but. He he would just bubble and say something like um I don't know apu that zagua, <laughs> but yeah it's hard it's been hard like it for me like it's a bit frustrating because um I really want him I'm not saying that he's not going to speak Portuguese or he's not learning he's definitely getting it、mm-hmm. but at this point I just think it's easier for him to say words in English. What we should probably mention too is the luxury that we have of my parents living a hundred meters away. Yeah, and so he literally sees them every single day. Pretty much. <laughs> and and my sister lives about a hundred and fifty meters away, and so he probably sees her what every second, third every day. Every second day. <laughs> yeah. And so every single time he leaves the house, he hears and sees, and you know, people、yeah. speaking English. And he also started going to daycare. Yeah. Which is like. Definitely an English speaking environment.、Mm-hmm. So yeah, and all the children that speak in English, and that's what I think has、um, reinforced his.、Um, well, and that's it. We forget how much he, I would imagine, has many, many more interactions with other human beings in English, in English. and it's pretty much just with us that we speak this other weird language,、yeah. even if it is the majority of the time. Yeah, and so. It is a sort of safe bet on his behalf、yeah. to be using English because the majority of the people he's going to encounter will be English、True. speakers. But what's the sort of plan of attack with、um, trying to maintain the Portuguese? If you want to talk a bit about that, I honestly, like, I personally don't have one. <laughs>、uh, my <laughs> idea one, is like,、one. well, what I think we,、uh, you know, we agreed on is like、um, we keep speaking to him in Portuguese、mm-hmm. and.、Um, Keep encouraging him to have、um, Brazilian friends or you know English sp-、uh, Portuguese well, speaking friends. I think、uh, the biggest thing that we've learnt from the interactions we've had with other Brazilians and other、um, mm. foreigners who've come to Australia and moved here, become Australians, but then used or or tried to maintain a language at home that's not、mm. English with their kids, is that you have to make it fun, and you have to show its utility. 
in that you yeah. show other people using it. You show yeah. you interact with other families, with other children, and so it doesn't become this lame, dorky, weird that thing doesn't that take you, him anywhere. Well, yeah. that you just do with your parents when you go home, right? And mm-hmm. and when you go home, your parents force you to do it, and so it becomes a double. Double-edged yeah. blade where the negativity is reinforced. Not only do I only do it with these people who I'm embarrassed to do it with, yeah. but they make me do it. And so, we have to try and find ways of interacting with other the Brazilian community, other Brazilian families, yeah. other Brazilian children and show that, you know, there are, there are other children using this. Mm-hmm. It can be fun because the important thing is not really just to get him to speak another language for the sake of it but to be able to communicate yeah. with his family well, in brazil that's the main thing yeah. the main thing right i don't i wouldn't be so um um interested in um, him speaking portuguese right now or at least been learning from such a young age if it wasn't because we have part of like part of his family speaks only Portuguese. Fifty percent, yeah, yeah. So, well, and uh, vice versa, fifty percent don't speak yeah. Portuguese effectively. <laughs> so yeah, we just um, we just have to keep trying, I think. And the good thing is, he's un- he understands. Yeah, he's getting it. It's like it's there. It's in his brain. <laughs> it would be amazing to know whether or not he is aware of them being two different languages. I don't think he is. No, well, whether consciously or subconsciously. Like I imagine that. There's a point to which you get where you suddenly know you need to put together phrases that are mm-hmm. just using one language. And so, it becomes sort of purified. Whereas, at the moment, he kind of spouts out words and they switch from one language to another. Yeah. So, I'm not, sure if he, I'm not sure if he sort of sees it as a soup and just mm-hmm. picks out what he needs when he needs it. Especially because my parents speak sort of very basic Portuguese they get from us. Yeah. So, they know if he says agua, he wants water. Or if he says mm-hmm. pão, he wants bread. Or, you know, something like that. Yeah. But it, it'll be interesting to see when the grammar starts kicking mm-hmm. in and he starts stringing together sentences mm-hmm. to what level he starts introducing Portuguese words into English or vice versa. Yeah. It, I, I just find it fascinating. Yeah. I think it'll sort itself out. I um, think so, too. We just have to be open to adapting to whatever comes, I think. Yeah. It is fascinating. It is interesting. Um, he's just started putting like two words together like Mm -hmm. literally thank you only a few times like Mm -hmm. he's done that Um, hi there hi there (laughs) very very hi there um, hi there very occasionally he says yes please he He says bye-bye he says bye-bye that's that's almost technically two words yeah he says yes (laughs) yes um yeah it's very cute it's very um um as a parent, it's beautiful to. See. I think that's why people have children. I don't know, just mm-hmm. to see a human being developing. And um, yeah, it's definitely the best part. It's about beautiful it. um, that you get to to makes you forget all the. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, just seeing him see everything through his eyes. That's sort of first for the first. Like he hasn't seen an elephant yet. I know he hasn't seen a giraffe. He hasn't seen a whale. And every time he goes to the beach, it's like mind blowing. The best experience he's yeah, ever had. Yeah, he loses because it. Because he loves Absolutely it. Absolutely loses like, it. And you remember, you think he's only been to the beach, what, like, I mean, a quite, a, quite a bit now. Yeah. But when he first went, you're like, this is the first time he's ever put his feet in water with I sand know. underneath them. And you're just mm-hmm. like, you forget, you take that for granted, all of those yeah. sorts of things. You know, he hasn't seen a Ferrari. He hasn't gone scuba diving. Like, there are all these things that he still has no idea. His world is still so tiny. Yeah. And literally a few houses that he goes to on a regular basis and yeah. a few places outside the house. And you're like, it's crazy that even those things keep blowing his mind. Mm-hmm. And the other thing is that he's not- he, The thing you realize is how much he hasn't experienced true evil or, or oh, nastiness yeah. or horribleness yet, right? Like, Help. you take him out into the world- and he thinks everyone is amazing, like yeah. his best friend. He'll just walk up to people and be like, hi there. Yeah. And you're just like, oh, as, as, as much as I feel like that's somewhat dangerous, you're kind of like, I want to foster that at the same Absolutely. time for as long as possible. I, I want him to be a positive person. Oh, monthly. <laughs> that's our job, yeah. to keep them innocent and like just not naive, but like just Enjoying safe. the innocence yes, for as long as safe possible. safe and like just- let them be children as for yeah. as long as you can because that's it ends uh, it, it ends and it's crush it crushes you <laughs> and like it's awful and wow. we, we, there was something that um it was very clear that i i had never thought i would experience that like 
I just, we just saw um, jealousy developing mm. in him. From like from one day, like he was fine with whoever was touching his toys, and mm-hmm. he wouldn't snatch things from like trying to grab things from other kids or anything. And then he just started doing it. It's interesting he, how these more complicated emotions come out. Yeah. So like that, he, initially he had, um, you know, effectively distraught, like not just yeah. unhappy, but like like the the most angry that you could ever yeah. be. And then on the other end, it would be the happiest you could ever be. Yeah. And he would just have these kind of like two extremes. So, when you're playing games, you know, peekaboo would blow his mind, right? Mm-hmm. And then if you didn't get the snack he wanted, it would be like you killed the his mother in front of him. It. Yeah, you just- he'd lose it. But then these other things like humor start to come out yeah. and, and um, you know, frustration, mm-hmm. anger- and Frustration is a big one. Yeah. Because he, when he can't, today, I don't know, like I, I was trying to put the little boxes, um, the whiskey thing. Do we have an advent him. calendar that yeah. has like 24 different it's boxes like a little, in it. Um, like a little shelf with boxes. Yeah. And he was trying to put them back. and he, Inside the- He wasn't quite getting it and he got so frustrated and just smashes it he wanted to do it it's like frustration because i want to do this thing i know uh-huh. how it works but i can't manage my my hand to work it's just nor my emotions yes <laughs> so but jealousy was a big one for me because i yeah. saw him the the sense of this is mine developing mm-hmm. in him like this is my toy i don't want you to play with it or even like, oh, you're playing with this thing that I want. I'll just get it from you. What well, became that thing, right? Yeah. We would have children over about his age and it would be a, what toy can I play with out of the box? Yeah. And it's sort of like I'm, I made that joke of, oh, whatever you want, just not that one. Yeah. Or that one. Or whatever or that you one. touch. Yeah. <laughs> right now, because the the girls, um, um, Amanda and Mia were here for the, during, during the, the weekend. Mm-hmm. Uh, not the weekend, the last few days. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, it was a bit like I saw him doing that a few times, but at the same time, it was more like he wanted my our attention. Mm-hmm. It wasn't so much about the toys. It was like, oh, you're talking to this person. I'm going to winch. Today, I was trying to, was it yesterday? I was trying to talk to my friends who came here to mm-hmm. say, to see us. And the, he would not shut up. Because I wasn't looking at him, I was just like having a conversation with two other people. Mm-hmm. So it's not all now. It's not so much about I want this thing. It, it happens, but it's like if you if we are giving someone else's the attention he thinks should be going towards him, he f- loses it. Well, ironically, yeah. so one he probably doesn't know very different, right? So he's yeah, so used to getting one hundred percent of our attention. <laughs> but evolutionarily, as the evolutionary biologist here. That is a very, very good way of getting more knowledge effectively mm-hmm. from his part, right? So, if he can do whatever it takes to get more attention, mm-hmm. he's going to learn from that and have a better chance at survival. Yeah. And so, there's a a big thing. That's why babies cry, right? Yeah. And that's why babies whinge. And that's mm-hmm. why, you know, they, they a lot of this behavior, it's all related to effectively them getting as much of your attention and resources as possible. For their own yeah. benefit. Which I believe, and I truly believe that it's not, they're not trying to manipulate you. Like, they're not, at least not at Consciously. this age. I don't think <laughs> Noah's like- Sorry, I'm just opening some whiskeys. Yeah. We'll talk about that in a bit. <laughs> um, no, I don't think Noah is actually doing that. I think it's a necessity from a very dependent being, as he is, well, the- to get his parents' attention all the time. And like, when I'm not in the room, he's mostly fine. And I come back and he just like, this is my person. This is my woman. I will not let you chat to her. Well, but even with me, sense. even when yeah. I hang out with him, he's always like, mama, 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 mama. mama. where's mom? Where's mom? And oh my God, like it's hard enough for me to hear, to listen to him crying. <laughs> even when I know he he's fed, he is not hot, he's not cold, he's fine. And mm-hmm. I've done everything to make him comfortable. Because I don't, there's a lot of necessities you can you can um, fulfill, but like there is also the necessity of being close to the person you feel the safest with. Yeah. I think that's a very important thing. But when I've done all that and I've given him as many cuddles as I can, he keeps crying. 
But now he's saying mama mm, when he cries. That's the most brutal that thing I've horrible. seen your reaction. It's when he's awful. upset and he's caught and you can just hear through the, the door. He mama. actually tears my muscle. It, like, actually, yeah. it's a very organic, like, physical reaction for me. Cause well, even I react and he's awful. not screaming my name, so I can't imagine. Awful. Well, and we were learning about that again to sort of get into the biology side of it, that the primary caregiver which is obviously usually the woman, but apparently the study showed that it's not just women. If you've got mm -hmm. a, a gay couple or if a stay-at-home dad, he it ends up happening to him too. Mm -hmm. but I think we were learning that the amygdala, that part of the brain, yeah. enlarges in the primary caregiver. And mm -hmm. as a result, you have a lot more empathy towards your, yeah. your child, probably children in general, but your child specifically. Yeah. Because obviously it's a big benefit to- your child's survival yeah. if you're much more sensitive to any time he or she is in distress. Yeah, it is. It does give you this, I mean, I, I'm sure all the moms of, you know, as you said, stay-at-home dads or whoever is the primary caregiver of a child, I'm, I'm sure people can relate to that. It's really real. It's like a physical reaction that I can't, I can't stand this. I have yeah. to go there. So sometimes, you know, in order to keep his routine or, you know, educate him, or you have to say no a few times and you have to stop him from doing things and just the crying and, like, getting around the fact that you know he's just whining, he just wants something that he's not supposed to have, <laughs> and y yet you have to be firm. It's mm -hmm. really hard. So, it's a mental sort of um, exercise. Yeah, you do every day, <laughs> at least as a mother. Well, I always feel bad because I give the tough love sort of thing where I'm like, ah, oh, he, he can suck it up. You know, he'll deal with it. And you're always like, no, he won't. And there has to be that kind of balance, I guess, between yeah. the two sides of it. Yeah. Anyway, we should probably move on. We've been chatting about um, bilingual children. We were meant to be yeah. chatting about 2020. What 2020. else has happened this year? Uh, Shwiskies. Shwiskies. <laughs> you got obsessed. We have a new obsession. We or I? You, you. So sorry. You, you have, got dragged into it. You one have way or a another. new obsession. It happens. A few, it happens a few times throughout the year. Mm. No, uh, P Peter develops a hobby. What was, what was the one before this? Photography. I still obsessed. I you're just not, don't have much not time upset. currently. You like it. Yeah. But I think you've. Um, that You've one, done everything you wanted, I think, at least in yeah. terms of, like, you tried new cameras and you got into really into it. And yeah. there was a time we would go out um, to to take photos almost every day, yeah. at least when we were in Canberra. I think the I, it probably but, pairs pretty well with lockdown and COVID as well mm. because because we couldn't just go out and move around. Yeah. And I think as well, so the thing, ha what happened was I started a diet. I started the keto diet, the ketosis diet, where you don't have any carbs effectively. We were yeah. very, very limited amount of carbohydrates in your diet so that you don't spike your insulin. And as a result of spiking your insulin, you store fat. Mm -hmm. So, instead of doing that, you you eat more fats and um, you end up not storing much fat and burning the fat that you've got. At least that's the basic idea. When I was doing that, I was like, I can't drink beer. And mm -hmm. I can't drink wine and I can't drink, you know, soft drinks that aren't diet soft drinks. And I was like, well, you know, my parents quite often together or get together or we have parties where I would like to have an alcoholic beverage of some kind. Mm -hmm. What can I have? And then I thought about whiskey and then it just ended up becoming a going down the rabbit hole. Yeah, pretty much. Sort of thing <laughs> and getting obsessed with it. And it's just sort of kept going. And I guess it's because it's a sort of an easy thing that you can do from home. You can obviously buy the stuff online. You can have it arrive at home. You can drink mm -hmm. it at home. And the other thing that I found that I loved about it was the social aspect of it. I mean, I don't really drink very much on my own. I'm drinking mm -hmm. with you now. I've poured two drams, we call it, these two little glasses of mm -hmm. some Taliska 18 and Balvini, the week of Pete, 14-year-old, if you guys want to know. But usually, I don't do it by myself. I'll do it when it's a social thing. And I really enjoy it because quite often it's a- not just drink to get drunk kind of thing at all. It's more, I've got four different whiskeys. Let's whip those out and compare them to one another. Mm. And this is- Kels yeah. found really funny. You can tell the, the story. No, I just found it because I'm not into it. And then from <laughs> the outside, it sounds like you just- being really wankers, <laughs> really f weird, pretentious Pre idiots. Yeah, just like 
um, very fancy sort of. Mm, mm, this one tastes like. Mm, I well, I guess a big toast interesting with Vegemite or like it's, it's just really the interesting <laughs> part about having whiskies when you get into the deeper end of, of sampling different kinds of whiskies mm. and just drinking a little bit of each one at a time as opposed to just doing shots. Yeah. Of an of a of a drink is and with the glasses that you get here, it's a big sensory experience that you kind of have. And the interesting thing that you can do with it, because whiskies are made in so many different ways and are so many different ages and are so different from one another, mm -hmm. you can get so much out of them in different ways. So, you'll smell different things, you'll mm -hmm. taste different things. Yeah. And so, the interesting thing, the thing that I think gets me off the most is mm -hmm. hanging out with multiple other people who are drinking the same whiskies. And then you compare what you're getting out of each one. Yeah. And so, you kind of like, okay, this one I'm getting dried apples, dried burnt apples mm. and, you know, some kind of salt water, dry seaweed smell. And the other person, <laughs> the funny thing is when you both lock on to one thing. Yeah, so it's interesting. Hanato was over the other day and he was trying one of the Brooklatic, um whiskies that I've got and he said- Man, this smells so much like green olives. And I remember as soon as he said that, I was like, man, I'm totally getting that as well. I can totally smell those pickled green yeah. olives. So, I don't know. It just- it became a very fascinating thing. And then I obviously took it the next step doing what- I think what- I mean, from- again, from the outside, I think the complexity around making whiskey is something that attracts you as well. Mm -hmm. Like, it's not like- you know, there's there's a lot into it, much more than someone like me who doesn't know anything about whiskey would suggest. Uh, but there's a lot into it. So, I think the process is something that fascinates you as well. I think and I, the I, cerebral I, side of it. So, yeah. I like the problem solving and the, the learning from scratch a new thing, like with photography as well. You know, it's yeah. kind of endless. You can do all kinds of different photography. Mm -hmm. it's, it's very difficult for you to do. You can go to the same place a thousand times and it's different every single day. Mm -hmm. I guess the same sort of analogous thing there would be like comparing the whiskies with one another, taking two photographers to a single location and comparing the yeah. photos they took. Mm -hmm. So, I definitely was keen and that's why I started with um, the whiskery, the Bellarine Distillery. Where we got married. Yeah, where we got married under yeah. the tree there. Um, I started volunteering just to see if I could come along when they were distilling whiskey because mm -hmm. I wanted to see the process in the flesh. And they were like, we need someone to work part time. So, I ended up working there three days a week or two days yeah, a week from um, 9 to 12 in the morning, mm. which is- How have you found that? Um, you can be honest. Oh, I, why, <laughs> why wouldn't I? <laughs> um, no, initially, uh -oh. I th was really um, on the fence about it. Like, mm -hmm. I obviously wanted you to go and have this hobby and that make some more money. and. Um, socialize because i know that's that is something i really yeah. need to work, work on. on for myself yeah it's hard when you have a child um but you don't appreciate just how important yeah seeing other people and again this is one of those things that's come out of covid and mm -hmm. the lockdown situation and that not just that you're a new mother and i'm a new father and that we're inside mm -hmm. with a small child anyway but the fact that you are also prevented from going yeah. outside and seeing and there many people. Are, there are other things like we live f a bit far from Melbourne, mm -hmm. where most people we know live. Um, so the, all those things. So I was happy for you, but then on the other hand, I was also like, "Wow, there will be days I'll be by myself here, yeah. and I can't just knock on your door and expect you to drive me somewhere or to do this for Noah or to be with him for twenty minutes so I can take a shower." So, I had to get around those things and be like, oh, I can't stop him from doing that. And I'm, I'm happy that he is doing that. But uh, I have to digest my feeling as a, my feelings as a, as a mother. And, well, and that's, and that, that was, was the difficult was thing relationship-wise, yeah. right? Because we've been navigating, you know, and we can talk about it recently, just fighting quite a bit because yeah. <laughs> we get stressed out and we get yeah. angry and, and. You know, we can talk about how we sort of manage those sorts of things. Yeah. But the same thing, I guess, I realized with wanting to do the whiskey thing was, one, I wanted to be out of your hair and away from you mm. for your sake so that you can kind of get a break. And mm. for my sake as well, so that I can kind of be away from you and refresh. Because obviously, 
we have the issue of me working from home. So I'm and we're in each other's <laughs> hair constantly. Yeah, but I think I think um if I don't know, I'm I'm suppose like I'm just it's not what I think you felt, but I also feel that it made you one appreciate much more how much I do because mm. I see that on your behavior, like how much you acknowledge it. It's like, oh yeah, you know, I know you've done, you've been doing so much, but it also, mm, I think it made you be more involved in well, a way. And that's that was the kind of because thing you come back home really excited and pumped, and up. you know that. Well, you spent a whole morning yeah. work somewhere else. You still have work to do for us English, but you know that you have to spend time with Noah because I was by myself with him and yeah. I need a break. So it, it's kind of like, it doesn't work every day, obviously. Some days we have hiccups and like things happen, but most days, um, you are fresh and like in a very good mindset. And because now Oz English is growing and everything, you have more people working for you, you can actually have more time to be with Noah. Yeah. So it, it turned out really well. I, I like when you go and I like when you come back much more because you're like, okay, I can take him for one hour or I can do this. And like, Well, it's one yeah. of those things where I think you need to set yourself up to kind of miss someone or miss something. Mm. You need time away from whatever that thing is, whether it's a hobby or whether it's your job or whether it's a relationship, people mm -hmm. in your life. Quite often, whether you know, long-term or short-term, there need to be breaks that you have yeah. because it refreshes it. And then you feel like every day when I come back from the whiskery at 12 o'clock, I'm dying to see Noah because I, generally you go out after yeah. you've woken up with him and go see my mum, go for a walk, go to the park. Yeah. And so, I'll wake up, no one's here, and then I leave and go to, go to work and then yeah. come back a few hours later and he's in bed. Usually, mm -hmm. just started his nap, I pretty much always miss that last little bit before mm -hmm. he goes to sleep. And so, I won't see him until about two o'clock. And although it's kind of like, a, oh, my God, I miss him, I miss him, I miss him, and I wish I'd been there the whole time, I really do like seeing him and being pumped and being like, all right, let's go do something, yeah. you know, and having that sort of time to refresh. I think that's why motherhood is so hard. At least, yes. I can only speak for myself because you don't get a, a break. break. You don't get a break unless you have someone with you that is really willing to be hands on and like work things out together. And even that, like even, even that I would say the, the load's much heavier for the mother mm -hmm. because at least for me, like I, I, I I'm a stay at home mom. Yeah. So it's like, I don't get a break for him and it's hard. Like sometimes it's not that I don't love him. It's not that I don't want to be with him or play with him. Sometimes I just don't have the energy. Yeah. Well, especially because you're seven months pregnant. Not the, only the physical <laughs> energy, but like the emotional energy to put into our relationship. Yeah. I'm not creative. I don't know what else to come up with. So he's happy and entertained or like. But I think we learned that more recently in the last yeah. month or two, right? That you don't necessarily need to be putting so much pressure on yourself to keep trying to push the boundaries and find all these new things for him a lot yeah. of the time. A lot of the time, he just needs you to be present. He doesn't need, and this is you in general, you, me, my yeah, parents, yeah, yeah. whoever it is, and he'll make his own games and make his own fun. Yes, now. but at the same time, he's he's still so young. Yeah, like I, I feel like it's easy, it's a bit easier to talk about that if you're talking about a two, three year old, like with your niece. Yeah, she's happy. She's happy to play by herself. And she, still, she demands attention sometimes. But with Noah, she, he is in a, in a position now that he, he'll play for a little bit and then he'll start looking around and, mm. or his mama, or his mama. And then he, I felt that he got much more attached to his, um, comforter, mm -hmm. Nani. His, so that, that th is this, this thing, little thing yeah. that he, it's like a halfway between a toy and a small cloth. Yeah. It's like a cloth with a head on it and some hands it's on it. It's just something he carries around. He carries around. around and sucks his thumb and smells it. Because it, it gives him the sense of safety and like, I, oh, this is my safety thing. And he's much more attached to, to this thing now mm. because we've both been trying to encourage him to play by himself or to do other things. Or sometimes we're just busy and like he keeps asking for it, which I think is healthy and fine. But, um, yeah, it's just hard because as a mom, you don't get a lot of breaks. Um, yeah. and then it becomes this thing that because you don't get a break, you become resentful and you're really tired. That's the stuff that I yeah. guess I didn't really appreciate before, obviously, getting into being a father. 
Yeah. Of just how much you kind of need to negotiate all of these things and how much things just end up happening because you let them happen and you have to, it's so much work. Yeah. Not in a negative way. Just You just have to realize that like the babies work, the relationships work, the mm-hmm. houses work, work is work. Like all of it is a lot of work to try and balance yeah. and maintain. And you have so many parts moving. I think mm. I finally have an appreciation for what it's like, you know, for parents because you- Before becoming one, you just see these people who are tired and Mm -hmm. yelling at their kids and you don't realise that the kid's been pushing their buttons for the last five hours and that they've just snapped or something. Yeah. And you just think, oh, my God, what a bad parent. And you're like, dude, (laughs) they're at the limit. (laughs) I have to admit that I was a Karen, like, (laughs) well, you know, just nasty comments about, oh, you know, see this this couple at the restaurant giving the child uh, an iPad to play with? You mean judgmental of other parents? Judgmental, yeah. Not all the time, obviously, because I'm not a judgmental person. I think you can't help (laughs) but but be that when you start becoming, when you're pregnant, you're expecting a child, or when you're a young mother and you think, oh, I'm going to do all the right things. Yeah, oh, my God, my child will never touch um, a cell phone Mm -hmm. but honestly so (laughs) every day you're picking your battles like you're just like what what is it that i'll fight for today is it the food fight or is it the sleep fight do i want to do i want to hold my ground and not show him a cartoon whilst trying to change his nappy and then end up with poo all over the couch and my hands and my knees and him running around with no Mm. nappy on or do I just want to show him the cartoon, have him lie still and change his damn nappy? <laughs> That's it, every day. Yeah. So, I do I do um, appreciate how much- It's well, a balance. It's a balance. Like, you have to- You honestly have to go for what's actually important. For me, it's like, he's sleeping fine, he's eating fine, and, you know- He's healthy and fine. If he gets dirty, I couldn't care less. Mm-hmm. If he's naked or just on an nappy, I couldn't care less. You need to tell the story about <laughs> the huntsman. Yeah, I don't. I, I probably you guys probably know. I I don't like spiders. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. I don't really like spiders. I don't actually. Not really. You don't I like don't, anything with more than four, what, I don't two or like four legs. Looking at photos of them, I don't like hearing about them. Or it's just just really. <laughs> Horrible feeling that I get. And then <laughs> Noah was trying to- um, cla- I'm laughing because I know the story that's coming. Yeah. I'm not laughing because Kel has a phobia of spiders. He was trying to climb on the, the pram. pram. And because he had, he had his back towards me, like I wasn't looking- at his face, I was looking at his um, back. And the, but as a note, the pram is outside it's because outside. We, we have collected four prams that we have found <laughs> on the side of the road effectively and we need to get rid of a few of them, yes. don't we, Kel? <laughs> yes, definitely. Before so, they're all outside, two on the front deck and two on the back deck. Please don't come to our house and rob us until we've gotten rid of the bad ones. And yeah. we oh, put the please one rob inside. the bad ones. <laughs> <laughs> Take the bad ones. <laughs> but, yeah, he was- and then- This one had been outside on the deck outside, for a week or two. yeah. And yeah. then, um, and we barely use it because it's, we got it when we thought we were going to Brazil. It's one of those you go to the, you take to the airport. So it's, it's a not, flimsy fold up. Yeah. It's not kind for of streets, definitely. No. So it's hot. It's, it feels like he, the kid, the thing's going to fall apart if, <laughs> when you take it outside. Anyway, um, it's not sturdy. Definitely. Um, so he was trying to get on, on that. And then he started saying, I don't, he doesn't say the art, but he was saying what me, what, in his head means aranha. Aranha, aranha, spider, spider, spider. spider. Aranha, aranha. And I was trying to find it. I was like, oh, where, where is it? Where is it? And then when I got him and turned him towards me, like <laughs> so I could see his face, he had crushed this this massive spider. A huntsman. And not only that, he was he had pieces in his mouth. He put the thing in his mouth. And bit it. Yeah. So the thing died. <laughs> Didn't beat him or anything, oh, but man. he was absolutely fine. And I, I just freaked out. I almost shook him. Like, I was mm-hmm. so scared. Well, I heard the aranha, aranha, aranha. And then I heard you kind of not scream, but kind of just make some noise. Yeah. And then I heard him start to cry and he was got, like, oh, I, crap, what happened? I scared him, which mm. I, I regret. <laughs> well, but you're in but the, it was in the my, moment. my reaction because i didn't know if the thing had done something to him or like if he had actually eaten a piece for reference this spider was big as my palm the palm of my hand so it was probably what the the size of Noah, bigger than noah's hand yeah bigger than his hand 
And he so, just got he just poor got thing. it. And I, I, I was so scared. Like I was honestly <laughs> f- shaking. And then he got scared because my reaction was a bit full on, and it was just like I, yeah. And the thing fell on the on the the deck, and I'm always afraid of spider. But I wasn't. I just wanted to see the thing away from him, and to I was checking him, like looking mm-hmm. inside his mouth and everything, in his hands, and and the the spider was just that literally that next to me, dead, dead. I, I, Dead yeah. as a doornail. Awful, I said awful. that about it when I when it had happened to you. I'm like, did you realize the spider was there right near you? Like, I mean, in his mouth and you pulled mm-hmm. it out and then on the ground and you were like, I didn't even think didn't about even it. Think I wasn't afraid it. of it at any point. And I'm like, isn't that interesting how your insti- yeah. instincts kind of took over the, the natural fear that you have of spiders normally and prevented you from yeah. freaking out? You know, because you would think normally, oh, I'll run if away. no one picks up a spider, I'll just bail, yeah, you know, no. but you totally did the opposite. Absolutely. It was horrible. Um, <laughs> it was pretty funny. <laughs> it was funny late it, after. It was funny <laughs> after the fact when he was fine and that had happened and was like, yeah. that's a pretty Aussie story. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. that, was, that was pretty badass. It was cool. Um, but anyway, it was just one of those um, <laughs> um Horrible moments where your child is doing something completely, they're completely oblivious of any danger and like any sort of hygiene or anything, and you just Mm -hmm. lose it. (laughs) He was probably pissed that he missed out on a meal. He was like, I was going to eat that. (laughs) What are you doing? Some protein. Yeah. So, uh, switching gears and changing the topic before we finish up soon, because I know you need to go to sleep. Yeah. Um, What time is it? Let me see. Oh, yeah, definitely. It's 9 (laughs) 30. Um, so, how has it been being pregnant this year through through COVID, through lockdown, um, obviously experiencing the effects of being pregnant mm-hmm. and then also having a one and a half year old the entire time? How, well, he hasn't been one and a yeah. half for the entire time, but y- you know <laughs> what I mean, a young child at yeah. the same time. Um, and, and who tricked you into getting pregnant again you. so soon and why? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god it was so well it wasn't like it didn't trick me like we were both <laughs> <laughs> nothing's gonna happen i promise <laughs> but um again it happened much faster than we thought <laughs> because with noah we talked about it a few times that we pretty much tried for a month less yeah we- I, well yeah a month but i think you were pregnant in the first two weeks yeah yeah. But we didn't know because the things we would read about it were like, oh, yeah, no, first time is usually takes um, six to f- eight months. And Well, they said something like 80% the first yeah. year. And I was like, well, okay, that's all. So, it's probably going to take us months. So, we better get at it. Like, well, and, yeah. You know. And then, and you don't, before you get pregnant or before you have a child, you don't really understand like how fast <laughs> things can, I don't know. It's just something that you learn that if we do it unprotected. You get pregnant <laughs> anyway. <sighs> yeah. um, but then the second time, um, I was actually, we were actually on it. Like, you know, let's have a few um, pregnancy tests at home. And Well, you were anal about it. Yeah. You were the one that was on it. I wasn't on it. I was you just, were the one I that was like, you know what? Know. I'll buy a box of these tests and I'll just use them Very every much. few days. And- I think I did five. <laughs> Before, obviously, before I, I was supposed to get my period and they all came back negative. Mm-hmm. But the thing is with Noah, two weeks before I was supposed to get my period, two weeks before the test came positive. So that gave me the the, the feeling that, you know, the thing will show up like it, really quickly, really, really quickly. So I just keep doing the test and mm-hmm. one day they'll be positive. And then it never came back positive. I was like, oh, you know, we might have to try next month or a couple of weeks because it, it didn't work. And I think most people had told us, oh, the second one usually takes longer yeah, and blah, yeah. blah, blah. And you're like, all right. And then honestly, one day before I was uh, to get my period. You could tell it like it's some sort of crazy story. Oh, that was the last test in the box and the there were no more the at the Woolworth <laughs> store. And it was like, oh, my God, it was no. raining and it was dark and I was really sad. And then all of a no. sudden... <laughs> And then I did it. I was. I actually handed it to you because yeah. the initial. It takes. You a told few me it was seconds. negative. I told you it was negative. I was like, oh yeah, yeah no. And then I just hear this. Oh, I was like, Kelly. Uh. And then you start laughing, <laughs> and I'm like, what? What is it? And what then have you done? It's positive. <laughs> and you forget. You forget what 
being pregnant feels like and I couldn't I, at the time I wasn't feeling anything I was like this is bullshit like I'm not pregnant and he was, was like, like yes you are I'm pretty sure the test doesn't come yeah. back positive. it's like COVID right the the false yeah. negatives or the false positives are not common yeah. <laughs> anyway so yeah pregnant again uh, COVID wise I have to say I personally didn't feel much um, I didn't have any Many things to struggle about, like being mm. pregnant during the pandemic, because well, we were already sort of in the thick of it. Yeah, and on, we live in a very um, we didn't have many cases here in Ocean Grove anyway. One, I was I wasn't going to Melbourne anymore yeah. for school. That was all online, yeah. and you finished it. Congrats! I finished it. Thank Woo-hoo. you. <laughs> um, bridging visa. Bridging visa. Yeah, hopefully not for long. So still then. waiting, guys. We're <laughs> yeah. still waiting. It's been a year or so. So I didn't actually have um, any sort of consequences of like, you know, oh, you're pregnant during the pandemic and that's how... The only thing, like, you can't go with me to the ultrasound, you can't yeah, be you can there. you have one person. But, you know, it's second pregnancy. We just don't care. <laughs> <laughs> you should tell that story. Yeah, like, we, I came back with um, Joanna, it's uh, the name we chose for our daughter, and I came back. They usually give you a photo and like this little printed thing. <laughs> Kill left the it in the car. I, w- one, I left it in the car. Or the other day, I found it under the couch. It's like. <laughs> well, that's partly because of Noah. <laughs> yeah, we just just don't have time to gather all those little things. And when you were the yeah. first pregnancy with Noah, you were constantly checking the app on the phone that would tell you how the many size. days you were. I the don't even the know. size comparisons, and now you're just like, is she kicking? She's kicking. It's all good. Yeah. Pretty much. The interesting thing is that we're ahead of our schedule, aren't we, Kelly? With regards to both Noah and um, Joanna. Yeah. <laughs> so with Noah, well, I guess we should say we went to Canberra, obviously, after Kel and I met and we had been together for a month or two. Mm-hmm. You ended up getting a job in the embassy at Canberra. Yeah, we moved there for six months. It's a whole- <laughs> and we were planning to live there for two years because that was the maximum amount, amount of time that you could have that job yeah. at the embassy. The sort of complexities of it was that unless you had passed that exam in the Brazilian government. Yeah, it, it, Brazilians will understand because it's a so like a public service sort of yeah. thing. So you have you to pass kinda, this exam yeah. to maintain a job for more yeah. than two years in the public service. So, it was a, like a... Um, temporary sort of thing, but yeah. it, things didn't work there. And then we decided to come to Ocean Grove, and and well, and we were holding out. We were like, okay, yeah. we'll do this. Um, we'll stay in Canberra for two years. Kel will work here, get this experience, and then if things keep going well, we'll get married and we'll have, you know, we'll we'll think about having children. And it pretty much ended up the opposite of where you ended up getting told that they couldn't pay or renew your yeah. visa. It was just a lot, a lot to do. With visa stuff, and mm-hmm. um, for us to stay in Canberra without having a job, I, me having a job was quite unfeasible because it was just it was pointless, expensive, really expensive not, not away that, from everyone. Away from everyone yeah. was more of the issue. And there was if there's nothing keeping us there, if I'm working for you know, Aussie from English home, from so home, yeah. Well, although I would love to stay because I had <laughs> made really good friends there and I still miss them um but um in the at the end of the day it was like well, what can that's not doable yeah let's go back to let's go to Ocean Grove and well I think we pretty much decided hey do you want to have kids earlier then seeing yeah. as this job's ending and mm-hmm. you know we have no other plans currently mm-hmm. and we decided yes and then that night I was like well we should probably get married right and you were like, yeah. yeah and I was like, well, I guess quick. that's a pro- proposal, yeah. right? So, I guess we're engaged. <laughs> Better you, change my Facebook status. <laughs> it wasn't that like overnight sort of thing, but that's We the were talking about it for a few sequence, days. Like that's how things progressed. Yeah. Um, but so, we came, we started trying in that September, I think, in yeah. Canberra. Came back to Ocean Grove, found out you were pregnant in- October. October. Few, like the beginning of October. Got yeah. our house in December. And then had Noah in, in June. June. And then we ended up having Joanna because the uh, because of COVID. <laughs> Ironically, she's going to be a, well, I don't know if she- COVID generation. I don't know if she'll be COVID generation or not. It depends if the vaccine wipes it out worldwide uh, by the time she's born, right? Well, but- it, the, She was conceived during, during lockdown. During the pandemic. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I'm sure you guys will probably be like, ah, you just 
had nothing to do during no, lockdown. But it was no. more, we were planning to go to Brazil yeah. in August this year. And because that fell through for obvious reasons, mm-hmm. we were like, well- if- There's nothing else to do. <laughs> no. Well, yeah, if we don't go now, we, we can go next year, but we don't want to go whilst you're pregnant. Yeah. And if we go next year, we don't want you to go, yeah, we, we, we're not going to get pregnant there. We'll have to wait until we get back. So, it'll be like another year and a half. Noah's probably going to be three to four years old mm-hmm. by the time you get pregnant again. Do we want that gap? Do we want to have moved so far away from having children and then come back into it again? Yeah. And so, we ended up just sort of flipping the coin and being like, let's just smash it out now. Yeah. And, and have the second child close to the first child mm-hmm. because of the current situation without We're being not able going to travel. To anyway. yeah. And then when we can travel in the future to Brazil, we'll hopefully have two toddlers. Yeah. Well, one toddler and, a, and, a, and an older one. F- yeah. Um, so, we're ahead of schedule. <laughs> high five, Kelly. High, high five. five. Woohoo. Um, yeah. So, the, the Brazil, the trip to Brazil, unfortunately, didn't happen. It, it will happen, but not <laughs> soon. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just, um, yeah. And then we got pregnant. Um, I, on- I can honestly say that if I had to wait a bit more and think it through... <laughs> I would probably be like, I'm not getting pregnant again. <laughs> so it, for me, for my like, for myself, it was kind of like, am I going to do this? If I if I am, I'm, I'm, I have to do it now. So it's kind of like when you go to the swimming pool and you climb up the ten meter board and you're you go to the there, edge yeah. and you're like, if I think too much, I'm not going to jump off yeah. this. So I just jump. Yeah. That's good. That's how I do it, Kelly. That's how I do those att- so, attack those kinds of, of life changing events. It's just just smash it out. Just do it and live with the consequences. For the record, <laughs> this is my last pregnancy. Oh <laughs> yeah. come on! We haven't. We having Noah. We have Noah. We're having Joanna. And yes, it's as I said, it's hard to as the kids grow up and you somehow find a way, you know, to deal with tantrums and everything and learn so much but you also <laughs> move you move away from you know you can sleep a bit more you can do things a little bit better and you don't want to go back to that place uh, mm. that's at least personally i feel like i don't i just it's a big big ask Francis, so me- <laughs> when you're editing this podcast, can you please edit that section out just so that kel can't come back and remember this and hold me to it thanks Francis. <laughs> So yeah. Anyway, um, but yeah, um, it's been fine. I mean, looking forward to it. I've been. Um, I, don't, I can't really say I've been enjoying it. Joining, um, being, being pregnant. pregnant because it's hard. Like especially when you already what, have a what's child. What's the upside, right? Well, yeah, you already have a child. You tired and fat, and you just can't do much, and you have to. Whereas with Noah, I was just like, oh, I just take a three hour nap today and be like <laughs> we had no other real yeah. responsibilities but um aka you, another child you make your work it, and i'm trying to be more positive that's my new year's resolution i'm trying to be more positive and look at things from a different perspective and i think things will be fine and there'll be hard days and hot nights and yeah but it, everything will be fine <laughs> i think so well and do you want to talk about our current situation are we have to move again. Is that what you mean? <laughs> yeah, that's what yeah. I mean. <laughs> yeah, so we've been here in this, uh, this ha- renting this house for two years. Two years. Um, not because we love this house, to be <laughs> honest, but because Jesus, it's conv- stick the boot in, like really <laughs> give it a kick. It's convenient, it's close to your parents, yes. it is big, it's really, it's a big house, mm-hmm. um, and it, we have too much crap, so it's hard to imagine... <laughs> That we have to pack everything up and move. She means actual poo too, because there are a lot of nappies that end up going into the bin. Thanks, Noah. Um, but then the the owners apparently want um, their, their son, son to, to move, move in. into this house. So that's the only legal way they can ask us to to move out. Yeah. Currently, because of COVID. So we now we have we're trying to find a place that is we can't we can't afford a massive five bedroom house. Well, we can. In Ocean it's Grove. just not somewhere good. It's not, yeah. yeah. But I mean, when I say it afford, it's like it's it's probably going to be very far. Yeah. So we can pay for it, or if it's really close to where we are, 
we can't pay for it, like the on, the one across the road. Yeah. So, well, <laughs> like one example, and this is the crazy thing that's happened because it seems like COVID, people are leaving the cities and coming into these towns like Ocean Grove mm. that are away from the cities but within driving distance. The rent and the, ex- the, the price of houses has just gone through the roof. And so, there's a four-bedroom house across the road that's similar to the one we're in. Mm-hmm. And for reference, guys, we're paying $450 Australian a, a week. Mm-hmm. For this house. And the one across the road has just been put on the market yesterday at $650 a week, right? A week. And it doesn't have air conditioning. It's yeah. on a small block. It's just ridiculous. And I think they're just trying to really capitalize on the market currently and mm-hmm. the fact that people are trying to move down um, to Ocean Grove. And so, we went to a few inspections. One yesterday on the other side of Geelong, which we only had what one other couple that came that we saw. Well, yeah, at least that we saw. But yeah. today there were a whole bunch in Ocean Grove. So, I mm-hmm. think it's one of those things where we took for granted just how good we had it, where mm-hmm. we have it in Ocean Grove, in yeah. this house at the rate we're paying for rent, which is still expensive in the grand mm-hmm. scheme of things, but relative to the other houses here now in Ocean Grove, yeah. it's going to be hard to find somewhere that's a comparable price. Yeah. Well, we have to accept that the place will be smaller than yeah. this one. Um, I would not, not newer though. Much newer. Newer. Not 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 so much in terms of being more expensive. It will be a bit more expensive, but like nothing nothing crazy. No. Just that it will be much. Not six hundred and fifty dollars. No. A week. And uh, it won't be within walking distance from your parents, which is no. annoying. And that's the biggest but, thing. You know, yeah, we want to find somewhere because Kel doesn't drive currently by herself. Yet. We wanted to find somewhere that she could, you know, have people nearby that she knew, that she could socialize with, yeah. especially family who have children around the same age as well that would be yeah. able to hang out. And the coolest thing that I think well miss is just the fact that. On both my parents and my sister and her mm-hmm. partner just go for walks and you just see them walking past the house yeah. all the time and they'll just drop in and say good day and you have dinner together and we'll have dinner they together spontaneously home, then, yeah. they can walk home they can get yeah. drunk and then be like it's fine I'll just walk leave the it's car fine. here yeah. well if you if you get the house we saw today they'll still have they can't really you know, it's not within walking distance. But <laughs> it's we a bit can of a sti- hike. It's still probably can, 3K. <laughs> we can still see each other on a, yes. you know, very often. Um, it's only, what, a 10-minute drive? Five-minute drive? Mm, five. Yeah. Not even. Yeah. So, probably that's the house we want. Although yeah. it's it's not big enough and there are other things, but that's the house we want. So, hopefully, fingers crossed, we get this one. Well, and we should probably mention to you guys, you know, if you find yourselves in a similar situation, we were speaking to the real estate agent and I was trying to ascertain from him what we could do to try and better our odds, improve Mm -hmm. our chances at getting this house. And um, we ended up just saying, like, we'll offer to pay six months rent up front. Mm -hmm. Um, We'll get into a two-year lease. Yeah. Um, So- you have to kind of try and barter them up, I think, especially when currently the the houses are so in demand. Mm-hmm. And so, they have plenty of options. The The supply yeah. is not very much, but the demand is high. You have to kind of sweeten the deal. Yeah. And so, because we've been saving up a bunch of money, I think at the moment we've got about maybe $20,000 saved for a house deposit because we want to yeah. buy our own house. And- I've had to sort of work out or say we've decided that we'll have to potentially just, just offer that up yeah. as uh, paying ahead of time for rent and then just start saving again yeah. in order to get a house in a good position. I think you just have to um, think, what can I offer? Yeah. What can I, mm-hmm. you know, what can I do in, in order to make my application a bit more competitive? and Tasty. Yeah, just, you know, just so we stand out and like, yeah, we don't know if it's going to work because no. there were so many people and people know those things and mm-hmm. they'll try and maybe someone will offer 12 um, to pay for a year in advance mm-hmm. or, you know, who knows. Well, and that's how the but, price goes up, right, for rent. Yeah. They'll say, I'll pay 10 bucks extra. I'll pay yeah. 20 $50 extra a week and then the entire market goes through the roof. But I have a feeling we'll get it. All right. I Fingers crossed. So. Yeah. Anything else you want to cover for 2020? Are you glad the year's over? Um, Do you think 2021 is going to be massively different? It didn't different? happen, actually. It was a simulation and we're not now- No fireworks. Yeah. yeah. 
No. No um, one was watching the fireworks. So, do we really know that they didn't just play last year's video? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Although there were no um, crowds. So, I'm I think they, glad, they didn't. I'm glad the year to, to, yeah, it's gone. And um, it was so sad for many people. Like, people just lost so much in yeah. terms of lives and um, freedom and other things and money and businesses that had to shut down. It's like. It's really hard. Well, that's um, probably a point of saying thank you so much to you yeah, guys. Yeah, absolutely. Because the fact that you guys have still been purchasing the courses, purchasing the memberships and supporting yeah. Aussie English is allowing us to save for a house to support ourselves, mm -hmm. for Kel to be pregnant and for her not to have to work, for her to be able to stay home yeah. and, and be a full-time carer for Noah and for me. Yeah, for you, yeah, mainly for you. <laughs> she changes my nappies each day as well. <laughs> no, but yeah, I, I, honestly, I feel that we are in a very privileged yeah. position that we just have to be grateful because it was such a tough year. I'm yeah. glad it's over so we can renew our like, hopes and just try and hope that the 2021 button, is a bit more... Um, a bit kinder to a lot of us. Um, yeah, you guys too. Hopefully, you, wherever you guys are, whatever situation you're in, um, I hope that things are going okay and that you guys are making it through all right. Yeah. And now we have another child on the way and there will be a new <laughs> adventure we'll talk about here. And um, yeah. Do so you want to tell people when uh, Joanna's due? Um, the end of March. Yes. The end of March. So, it could happen on your birthday, Kelly. Could happen you anytime now because- Jesus. 28 weeks is when the chances of 28 survival, weeks 28 what? weeks is 28 when the weeks. chances of survival are considered you know okay so mm -hmm. it's still difficult and awful that you have a child premature that, baby premature baby but yeah can happen <laughs> so hopefully she stays inside and cooks for a bit longer and yeah did you have any new year's resolutions for 2021 I've gone on a diet. I'll talk about that oh, after you, but you cool. go first. You know that. Um, no, I think just- Be kinder to yourself, more be positive. Kind to, be more positive, definitely. Um, Fight keep, less with Pete. Keep working on my <laughs> mental well-being. Like, you know, I've been doing a lot to um, get it, the right mindset, to start What's, my day with the right mindset. It's and such like, a hard balance having children and doing yeah. that because you forget you, you sort of neglect things like that, like your yeah. mental health. You don't think it's too much, you know, making time for yourself, making sure you're okay, yeah. checking in with yourself. Those things are easy to put on the back burner and, Absolutely. and you know, forget about. But it, Because as long as you're still up and working and getting things done, yeah, it, it's fine. Like your, your children are fed, like the houses, the... I wouldn't say clean, but, you know, you can still live here, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and then you forget, oh, it's been three days since I had a shower <laughs> because that's not my priority when my child's crying so much and I need to work out what's for lunch, you know. Yeah. Um, and then as soon as he's down, you're like, time to sleep. Yes. Every single day I plan, I'm going to do so much when he's sleeping. <laughs> and then you and get to bed. he doesn't bed. sleep for much and I go to bed straight away. Which um, is good. That's probably the most important thing, to be honest. Than yeah. more important than a shower. But you yeah. could sleep in the shower. Yeah, true. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think working, working on that, like just really putting myself first sometimes, mm -hmm. and being like, as especially now as Noah gets a bit older, he's he can understand a bit more. You know, he can just he'll be fine if I leave him for a little bit. So it's easy for me to say, you know, how hard it is for me to actually put it in, into practice. Um, but I'll, I'll try and <laughs> do that this year. Anything, right? It's like learning English and having a proper routine. It's like going to the gym. It's like me with weight loss. Mm -hmm. You just have to build the habit. You have to keep showing up. You have to keep doing the hard work initially until yeah. it becomes routine. And then it, it's sort of the, it's compound interest. It starts mm -hmm. taking care of itself and the results start speaking for themselves. But it mm. doesn't just happen because you decide you want it to happen. Yeah. You have to take action. But again, oh my gosh, she's kicking so much. I know, I keep seeing you grab your stomach. I'm like, yeah, yeah I can actually. Kicking I, the crap out of you. She is. But again, <laughs> I because- I want out, I want out, let me out. <laughs> Not yet, you're still cooking. You're still cooking. Um, <laughs> because we are expecting a child now- I don't actually have many plans apart from let me try and get through these experiences 
as well as I can. Like yeah. I want to be a good mom. I want to be in a good, you know, mind、um, headspace. Headspace, and I want to relax when I can. I want to take care of her as well as I did with Noah. Anyway, that's my main thing. So I can't really, I can't say, oh yeah, I'll take up a new. Hobby, or you know, it's just not. I know, and I, I feel realistic. That's、yeah. been one of those things for me where it's been difficult because I don't like the fact that, you know, I, I appreciate the fact that I'm kind of running around doing my own thing because、mm-hmm. I have, I know that I have more spare time than you. Yeah, you know, and for, it's not necessarily fair. Yeah, and I'm looking forward to when you can. Yeah,、I、we've been talking、it. about it, like when. We can finally drink together. <laughs> Kel definitely misses、yeah. that. She's like, "Oh my god, wine!、Yeah. Oh, red wine, red wine. That's that's it." Anyway, Kel、cool. wants to go to bed. I do. But yeah, well. But tell me about your diet. Like that's your. Well,、resolution. I just said that. So I had before you bugger off before you go to bed.、Mm-hmm. I had that、um, resolution with my dad. So my dad's obviously someone that if you guys have seen the Goss videos, you'll know he suffers. Um, with obesity,、mm. you know, and needs to lose some weight. And I've definitely understood a bit more about his plight. You know, I admit when I was younger, you know, you kind of don't realise how people become really overweight and and、yeah. how hard it is for them to then lose weight because you think, oh well, I'm a twenty year old going to the gym all the time and I have all this free time to be active and blah blah blah. It's just a matter of you just. But now, you, <laughs> well, that's it. And now, being a dad and being someone who is perfectly capable potentially of losing all this weight and being much more active, I realise how much it is really difficult、mm-hmm. to find time. It just becomes a lesser priority because I have a child, because I have a wife,、yeah. because I have a business that's at home that I don't have to be very active to maintain, but I want to do as much as possible because I have hobbies.、Mm-hmm. So this year, both he and I have just made that New Year's resolution of eating. Clean, trying to avoid as much、um, sugar as possible, not having wheat in our diets,、mm-hmm. not being too strict on things, but at the same time, just maintaining that we're eating clean and、mm. trying to be more active, and, so, and trying to both, you know, motivate the other、mm-hmm. as well at the same time. So, do you have a like a goal? Like, do you want to lose five kilos or? I don't really care too much about the numbers, to be honest. It's more about the appearance. Being healthy. Yeah, I just want my six pack back. Oh, okay. And I mean, that's, that's easy then. It's a shallow <laughs> thing to say, but I guess it's not really. I don't really give a shit about having a six pack. It's just a. It, it signifies that you've done a certain amount of the weight loss. Okay. If that makes sense, it's kind of a proxy, right?、Mm-hmm. Kind of like if you're like, I, I, I just want to be fluent in English, but it's like, really, do you just care about fluency? No, you care about communication and、mm, wanting、yeah. to be able to have good conversations with people. Fluency is just a proxy,、mm. so it's more that I would like to be able to see my abs again, <laughs> <Okay> . and then I'll be like, okay, I know as a result of that that I will be very healthy and、mm. able to move around much better and feel more comfortable in my in my appearance and everything,、mm-hmm. and that it'll confidence will come with that. Yeah,、it、becomes one of those things. It's really funny when all of a sudden the t-shirts that you've got just don't fit you anymore, and you find yourself gravitating towards、it. one or two of them. <laughs> Tell me about it. But yours is self-imposed. <laughs> I mean, well, so is mine. But、um, yours will disappear in a hurry, and、I、everything will、so. fit again. I can't really just、uh, go to the hospital and come back, and all my shirts <laughs> fit. <laughs>、uh, yeah. So、oh. hopefully, fingers crossed. Give it a few months, but. Yeah, just trying to. It's it's one of those things. The stricter you get, I find the harder it is to maintain that in the long run. So you kind of have to find some comfortable medium that you can、mm. maintain. Like with learning English and being like, I'm going to study eight hours a day. No,、nah. it's like that's not necessarily feasible、bar. forever. Yeah, you have to find some kind of medium that's feasible every、yeah. single day that you can maintain. Awesome. Anyway, thank you guys for hanging out with us, and I'm so、thank、glad、you. Kel's come back on the podcast.、Yeah. Because I don't know when the last one that you were on here. No, I have no was. idea. No idea.、But、probably quite probably. quite a while ago, or、yeah. you may have done some of those episodes about reacting to accents. That was probably yeah, the most recent appearance. Yeah, that was the recent one. Yeah, that was quite fun. But people didn't get to hear about you, so that was why I thought it was important to drag you on. Cool. Keep you from bed. Anyway, she's knowing. She's knowing. She knows that it's ten o'clock. <laughs> she's no. You keep doing that now. Because I'm thinking in Portuguese with the grammar. <laughs> But you, the the thing that you、um, use a.、Um, The start of a word. Spoonerisms. A, yeah, you keep doing that. I、thing. don't know. Yeah, <laughs> I'm having strokes. Clearly, my brain's dying. And、I'm, what do they keep saying? We've got friends called Ralph and Jane, and I kept calling them Jalf and Rain. 
yeah, spoonerisms, they're called in English, where you take the first syllable or um, letter of a word, two words usually, a phrase, and you switch them. Cool. Yeah. Anyway, thanks for hanging out, guys, and we'll see you next time. Peace.